Yeah, it wants the electric field at point P due to a square uh, loop of charge carrying a uniform uh, charge density lambda. Meaning, this is a linear charge density, meaning Coulomb per meter. Okay. And so, and so uh, we know the way we would do this question is we're going to do it using the uh, integral method. Uh, we know that E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon integral of lambda function of the uh, prime coordinates over separation vector squared and this is the unit vector in which the electric field is pointing dl prime okay that's kind of the idea okay so now uh, what we do is the easiest way to do this question is we have four sides okay now, if we take one piece of this side and if we connect it to point P, okay, and let's assume here that this is the z-axis, okay. Now, realize that on the opposite side, there's a symmetric piece. So, if this is positive charge, the electric field will be in the upper direction, okay. But there's also a, this is not so straight, uh, here. okay, but there's a symmetric piece on this side of the square, right, where if we connect it, the horizontal component towards the x-axis, or the y-axis, if, if this is the y, and this is the x, and this is the z, the y component will cancel out. And uh, likewise, if I consider the front piece and a back piece, the x components will cancel out. Therefore, by symmetry, by symmetry, only E z does not equal zero, but E x equals 0 and EY equals 0. And so that means you need to find the X component of this. Okay? And so this is your separation vector because it's from the source. That's It's from here. From the source to the field point. This is the separation vector. And uh, the electric field, of course, will be that way. So if we call this angle theta, this angle will be theta. And E will be E, or EZ will be E cosine theta. Right? It's the Z component of the electric field. And if you were to connect this point with that point, here, okay, and you make a 90 degree angle here, you know if this side is A, this is A over 2, okay, and uh, uh, let's just say that this is the x-axis going up this way, okay, and this is the origin here, so if you choose this point at x a distance x away, right? This little piece you would have chosen is actually dx. Okay, and now is that enough hint? Could you go on or you, you want more info on how to figure the electric field?
because, because now this side here becomes a over 2 square plus x square, square root. And this is, we took this to be the origin. Okay, so uh, a lambda, since we chose our path of integration along the edge of the square, uh, gl prime will just be gx prime. And um, our separation vector will just equal z squared, because this here is 90 degrees, plus a over 2 squared plus x squared square root uh, squared. So the squared goes away. And, uh, and, uh, we have a square root, and so we need the squared, so this will just be squared. Um, and so if we plug all that into the integral, we get E, Z, to be, let's write in blue. So E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon, the integral of lambda. Uh, which is just lambda, it's uniform, so we can take it out. And uh, we have dx prime divided by z squared plus a squared over 4 plus x prime squared. And this is all in the z direction, so we're going to put in here cosine theta, because this is just ez cosine theta. And from the figure, cosine theta is just z over the separation vector. So, cosine theta is z over the separation vector. And so this becomes 1 over, f oh, and by the way, we are integrating, if this is the origin, this is minus a over 2 since it's half the edge of the square, to a over 2. So this is going from minus a over 2 to a over 2. So this becomes 1 over 4 pi epsilon lambda from minus a over 2 to a over 2. So we have z over separation vector, and this is separation vector squared, so it becomes z squared x prime squared, so half and 1 will be 3 over 2, dx prime. Mm. Let's see how we could solve this integral. This is, by the way, an even integral. So we could just go 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon, uh, 0 to a over 2 over z. And z is also a constant, so we can pull it out. So this will just be dx over, uh, let's just call this here alpha. Uh, or let's not say alpha, let's call it k squared. k squared plus x squared to the 3 over 2. This can be done using trig substitution. Uh, let's go ahead and see how. So if this angle here is alpha. Uh, we can call this side here x, and this side k, and this would be k squared plus k squared square root. 
and uh, we can see that uh, the tan alpha equals x over k. So x equals k tan alpha. So dx is <coughs> k <coughs> secant squared alpha d alpha. And uh, we have uh, k, if we take cosine alpha to be k over k squared plus x squared. Uh, and so that means cosine alpha over k is equal 1 over k squared plus x squared. Raise this to the, uh, so this is to the half, so cube both sides. So then we get, if we cube both sides, uh, then uh, this is just this without the dx. And so now the integral becomes, uh, we might as well change the bounds too. So let's see if, uh, if x equals 0, uh, plug this, so tan alpha equals 0. So alpha equals 0. And if x equals a over 2, alpha equals inverse tan a over 2. Okay, so plug that all into the integral. So ez becomes lambda z over 2 pi epsilon 0 to inverse tan a over 2. dx is k secant squared alpha d alpha over uh, or times that's for dx and this this is all math here so I'm assuming some background with calculus 2 slash 3 here so uh, this is just cosine cube alpha over k cube two of these cancel out and we get uh, what's left is cosine. So this becomes lambda z over 2 pi epsilon. Uh, let's see, we have here uh, k cube and k, so we've got k square left in the denominator. And uh, we have cosine alpha d alpha, which is sine alpha from 0 to inverse tan a over 2. Mm. Let's just go back to x. It's probably easier to go back to x. So, um, so ez is equal to lambda. So we don't have to do much trig over 2 pi epsilon k squared. And sine alpha from the triangle is uh, um, x over square root k squared plus x squared. Uh, got this from the right triangle. So let's see. And we are evaluating this from 0 to a over 2. So ez is equal to lambda z over 2 pi epsilon k squared a over 2 over k squared plus a squared over 4 minus, if I plug in 0, I get 0. Um, So finally, ez is equal to lambda z over 4 pi epsilon uh, k squared 
and we have an a here and we have k squared plus a squared over 4 and this is coming from one piece of the square we actually have four pieces but each and every single piece will involve the same exact integral so by symmetry we can just multiply this by 4 and get a naught so therefore so the final answer so if I multiply this by 4 since there's four sides I get e equals 4 lambda z a over 4 pi epsilon now remember k was z squared plus a squared over 4 just for abbreviation so I don't have to keep writing it so this is z squared we call that k squared z squared plus a squared over 4 and here uh, z squared uh, plus a squared over 4 plus a squared over 4 will get me z squared plus a squared over 2. And this is all in the z direction. So this is the electric field of a four-sided square. This concludes questions.